One of the most iconic scenes from Star Wars is finally brought to life by LEGO. This is my review of set 75387, boarding the Tentive 4. Or Tentive V4. I'll stick with Tentive because that's what I'm used to. Let's get started. The box comes with that shiny 25th anniversary box art as it's part of that line. And on the front, we get a great look at the corridor model with, as the background, also the corridor. <laughs> I mean, what else could they do, right? We are shown on the front, this box includes another exclusive minifigure for LEGO Star Wars' celebration. And on the back, we're shown another shot of the set, this time a recreation of Vader force choking General Antilles. Nice. <laughs> Let's open this up and see what we get. Inside are a total of five numbered bags, an instruction manual, and a tiny little sticker sheet. Pretty much exactly what you'd expect. I can't wait to see this in hand, so let's get building. Before checking it all out, first some objective information. Set 75387 boarding the Tantive 4 came out March 1st this year as part of the 25th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars. It is aimed at ages 8 and up, retails for 55 euros, 55 dollars, 50 British pounds and 90 Australian dollars. This gives you a value of about 11 cents per brick, which is nothing out of the ordinary for LEGO Star Wars. It weighs 405 grams, meaning you're paying more or less 13 cents per gram of LEGO. This set contains a whopping seven minifigures including the anniversary figure. Here are the spare parts I've gotten and the instruction manual has a total of 130 pages. For now that's all we need to know. This Lego set is a recreation of the opening scene in A New Hope, the first Star Wars movie ever. Darth Vader, along with a band of stormtroopers, boards a rebel blockade runner in hopes of locating the stolen Death Star plans. They're met with quite an amount of rebel fleet troopers, but unfortunately for them, they make short work of it. It's a classic moment in cinema history, and it's crazy Lego never made this before. I am super excited. Now, before looking at the set as a whole, first, the minifigures. Let's begin with Vader. Not a new figure by any means, but like I keep saying, a fantastic and faithful recreation of the character. The arm printing looks fantastic, you can't really go wrong with it. It isn't a super desirable minifigure, but the scene wouldn't be complete without him. Next, we have General Antilles. This figure also isn't new, although his secondary facial expression is slightly different from the previous 2019 version. I just noticed that. They still use the same helmet mold for Rebel Troopers, as they should. It still looks great today. Honestly, no criticism here. Spot on. Then we've got the regular Rebel Trooper, basically the same story here. They look just as great as they did in 2019. One thing Ryan pointed out, which I thought was interesting, they didn't print the skin tone on there this time around. Kind of strange, not sure what happened there. The Stormtrooper. I know this newest helmet is a bit of a controversial one. You either love it or you hate it. Personally, I love it. I think it resembles the aesthetic so perfectly. I'd actually love a battle pack with these new ones, because I would army build the actual hell out of them. But that aside, it's a Stormtrooper. It's nothing that new or unique, uh, but definitely crucial to the scene. Finally, the exclusive minifigure you get is Arc Trooper 5's, and uh, <laughs> what a discussion this guy started. <laughs> You've probably heard it already, so I won't waste too much time on it, but the printing on the helmet just doesn't look right at all. A uh, bit sad to see. Apart from that, the flat-looking shoulder pauldron uh, is also a bit strange, but I do still think it's a dope figure, and I love having it in my collection. The arm printing looks amazing, and just as a whole, it is a super detailed figure, and I like it a lot. Sure, it's not perfect, but hey, it's cool. Building this little thing was a ton of fun, actually. All the curved slope pieces are super satisfying to use, and the whole thing came together just beautifully. I didn't experience any repetitiveness in a negative way, just a fun little build. I spent maybe an hour max building this set. This model measures 22.5 centimeters in length, about 13 centimeters wide, and 8.3 centimeters high, making it definitely a tad bigger than the previous corridor set, but more about that later. As a whole, it looks really, really nice. They were able to capture the essence incredibly well, most notably by using the ingot pieces and all those curved slopes. It just comes together perfectly. Not to mention, accurate as well. If we compare it to what we see on screen, you can just tell they absolutely nailed the look. I particularly love the grill pieces with the trans red underneath mimicking those red lights. It's just great stuff here. There are some stickers which add the smaller details on the walls. Unfortunately, those once again are slightly wider than the bricks, so they do stay 
stick out a little bit. The door, however, is printed and looks freaking amazing. The back side of the whole thing naturally looks a bit less charming, but who really cares? It's just functional. In its entirety, I just like the way it looks. It's got a nice stud to tile ratio and well, it's just all I could have hoped for. Now, as far as the play features go, there are a bunch of little levers in place that allow you to kind of drop figures to the ground as if they're being shot. It's a very simple mechanism, but it works like a charm. The only thing I don't love about it as a display type of person are those holes it leaves in the floor. It would have looked nicer without those, but of course this isn't meant as just a display set and the feature is definitely fun to play around with. Additionally, there's a handle for the door to open up, revealing the fiery edges on the sides because, well... <laughs> they weren't particularly subtle when coming in here. You can also use this handle on the other side to do the exact same thing. I'm not sure why we needed to, but here we are. There is also a little room behind the doors to place figures if you would want to. And it does also come with a transparent piece so you can recreate Darth Vader force choking someone. It's pretty dark that they include this, but uh, it's awesome as hell. At the back, there are some studs for you to store that piece and maybe a gun, whatever you want. Now, since I have the Dark Trooper attack set, I thought I'd compare the two and well, let's say you can tell why this new version is more expensive. It's not only bigger, but also bulkier. One thing I really disliked about the Dark Trooper one is the way the walls were built using these window-like pieces. I don't know why, but it made it feel super cheap to me, whilst this one has thick, solid walls and just overall looks more solid. I think the higher price is more than justified and definitely helps making this just look even better. Now, at the end of the booklet, it tells you that you could connect two of them making for a longer hallway. Uh, I personally think that the way they want you to connect it looks ridiculous, but I've already seen people be pretty creative with it. For example, building one of them mirrored. There is really tons of ways you could expand it by using the pieces provided, and I do love that about this set. It feels very customizable. To me, what would have made it perfect is if the door segment was separate and could be detached. That way, if you had two of these sets, you could simply add the corridor segment at the end and then have just a separate door maybe flipped on the other side. Just something I thought of. Anyway, I really love what I'm seeing here, and honestly, it's all I could have asked for. Pros and guns. The accurate details and overall design can't be overlooked. It looks just the way it should. It has both displayability and playability, which makes it a great set for any age range. And the amount of minifigures is great. Seven in a $55 set is pretty neat, I can't lie. As for cons, I couldn't really come up with anything other than the white stickers. So I guess that says enough about what I think of this set. For me, it's a no-brainer. It looks nice, it has everything you'd want, and well, yes. If you liked this video, consider checking out this other review on screen now. I put a ton of effort and love into these videos and I love seeing your comments and support. Consider subscribing and then I hope I'll see you in the next one.